Amen. Incline your ear. Amen. Open up your heart to this wisdom. Amen. Get your paper, get your pen, get your plate, and get your knife and get your fork. Amen. Let's get ready to eat of the word of God from none other than our great overseer and bishop. Amen. That is Pastor Bassett, overseer, Jeanette Williams White. We love you, Mom. Love you, son. To all of God's children today, uh, this morning is another God bless you day because we opened our eyes and we thank him that we were yet in the land of the living. Many have gone home to be with the Lord, and it seems that every day I wake up, there's another soldier that has gone home to be with the Lord. But I must trust and know uh, that the Lord know all things. And because he does, I rest assured in my salvation that he's able to save us and to keep us. But here we are before the Lord again on this day to deliver a word from the Lord. And we pray now that your ears might be open, your heart would be open to receive, and your eyes would be open that you might see. And I thank God for that as it goes out across the line, land on this morning. We're going to go to Luke chapter 5 verse 37 and 38. And I'm sure this is a familiar passage in the house of the Lord among God's saints. And the word of God reads thus, and no man put a new wine into old bottle, else the new wine will burst the bottles and be filled, and the bottle shall perish. But new wine must be put into new bottles, and both are preserved. Listen to that again. But new wine must be put into new bottles, and both are preserved. The bottle and the wine is preserved. And so the 39th verse just concluded, says, no man also having drunk old wine straightway desireth new, for he saith, the old is better. Oh, my God. When the Lord gave me this word and told me to go and study and prepare to deliver it to you, uh, it is apropos for just where we are. And we're going to title this message, Stretch. Just stretch. Wherever you are, just stretch. See, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but when you understand the old uh, 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 bottle holders, if you would, or the old flasks that were used uh, to pour the new wine in, there was a flexibility, a giving in that skin that was used. And so if you can imagine and put yourself in that place, then you will understand that that skin was able to be stretched. And so I ask the Lord just to stretch you on this morning. It was pliable. It was able to be wrung and to be twisted and, and, and to be positioned to receive uh, the new wine. So it was in a state that would allow it to be stretched. In order to receive the new wine, it had to be stretched because of the process that it would go through in order to house the new wine. And so here we look and we say to you this morning, just stretch, allow the Holy Ghost to stretch you, to become pliable, be, to become shaped, and to become formed by the Holy Ghost in this new place that we are in. So here we find that Jesus speaks to the Pharisees, to the Sadducees, and Jesus speaks in Scripture 
uh, many times in a parable. A parable is used to reason, to represent a particular principle, a God-given principle, if you would, in this instance. Others will say it is a metaphorical story. So the story that you hear is not necessarily the story or the end point of where God is trying to get you to. But his word in this time of writings had to be revealed to a people who did not have the evidence of the Holy Ghost, which would allow them to receive from on high the interpretation of clarity of the word that Jesus was giving. So many times out of his 40 some odd parables, he would speak them in order that heavenly language could be transformed in a day and time when the Holy Ghost had not descended on all men. Because we're talking about before Acts chapter 2. And when the Holy Ghost came, then there was revelation into the heart of men, and they could see. But until they got to that point, unless you were John the Baptist, who was Holy Ghost filled from birth, who could see from his mother's womb. Help me, Holy Ghost. So being able to see that far in advance into the future of what God had predestined in his life and the lives of others. And for those who were to come, we need the Holy Ghost. So, so just say, stretch yourself, shake yourself this morning and shake off all that old stuff and old thoughts and beliefs that you would have. So we find here in this parable that there is a deeper meaning that is being exposed through the usage of the wine flask as a point of, uh, uh, of speaking. Now, when you look here uh, with the wine flask, it is much like the gestation, if you would, of a baby that is incubated uh, within the, moon, the womb of a mother. In that womb, the baby goes through processes, goes through different stages, if you would, of development. Now, it is such a miraculous uh, undertaking that occurs in the birth of a human being, the gestational period and process, how the woman's body begins to change over a nine month period. There is blood that is infused, extra blood, all type of extra, if you would, uh, uh, internal uh, uh, mechanisms that go on in that womb. And it happens in order that the baby might be fed and nourished and and, and lay there until the proper timing uh, for the baby to be born with eyes and ears and, and nose. And, and, and the scientists now can look at the ultrasounds and determine the sex of a child. And, and as they're going through, they can tell if there's heart murmurs going on or if anything ill is, is coming in the womb of that child. And as we look at the process, there is a overcoating, if you would, you have the mother's womb, and then there is another overcoating that occurs over the skeletal system, which is your bony structure. Outside of that, we have what we call the layer of skin, which is an organism. You don't think of it that way, but it is. It is an organism that covers the body and houses all that God puts together in the formation of a human being. Now, because a mother becomes pregnant and the child begins to grow and to mature within the womb, don't you know that only a 
God can bring about such a miraculous uh, situation. A mother will gain something like a uh, 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 blood, extra blood, so many pints of blood that's in the baby. The mother will gain weight so that she can nourish and feed the baby. And what's still so amazing is that her, 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 her uh, circulatory system, uh, the vessels, the, the veins and the arteries, connect with that baby and feed that baby and nourish the baby. And so we have that covering. And until the appropriate time, the baby does not come forth. If the baby comes before the time of maturity, then you will sometime have have birth defects, ill uh, form uh, organisms, heart murmurs, different things that will happen to the child. And so then God gives, even in gestation, a covering. And so it is called process. When you look at the church on today, we have been going through process in the pandemic. And here God sets before us new wine skin, and he sets before us a stretching. That's why I'm telling you, the stretching happens in the new wine skin. And so that stretching, and it's pliable, and the fermentation process happens in uh, the wine, in that wine flask. And only that new wine flask can contain the new wine because it is equipped to receive it and hold it until the appointed time. So then we are looking at what Jesus is saying. He said we have new wine that is being poured into a new wine flask. Now, understand this point. If you pour old wine into a new flask, it cannot hold it. It will go bad on you. If you take new wine and put it into an old flask, it cannot hold it. It will rupture and burst. What am I saying? We cannot take the new wine that God has down loaded to us into an old situation that we had 12 months ago. If you look at the situation of the church as Jesus is walking through here, he, he tells them, he said, look, fellas, if you continue, if you want to take the old Torah and you want to want the new uh, Gentiles to walk therein, they won't hold it. They're going to burst along the journey. You as Pharisees and Sadducees could not keep the law. That is why Jesus came on the scene. If they could have kept the law, then we would not have needed a New Testament. But they could not keep just to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all that understanding. They could not hold that principle. We know that the Pharisees, that they ruled for over 300 years. The Sanhedrin court guided and led Israel. And so as we moved along in this journey, Jesus had to come. And as we said last week, we're safe in his arm for the Lord. He is our shepherd. And so here today we come and he wants to teach us that we can bring the old into the new. We cannot go uh, back into our edifices as more are opening up as uh, the vaccine is coming and being distributed throughout the nations, uh, indicative of a more safe environment. We are not 
foolish to believe that anything except for the blood of Jesus that yet runs down Calvary's cross is what will keep us safe in his arm. It is the blood, it is the blood. But we thank God that he has given the knowledge and understanding to our scientists to bring into the world uh, 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 something that can help us. But we are not short to think that anything, because the Lord giveth life, and he taketh life away because he is a sovereign God. He do what he will and what he pleases. But one thing, we're here in this pandemic, and he has brought us to our knees. He has brought our country to his knees. So what? We are here as Daniel. We are in a place of repentance and asking God to forgive us, to help us, Lord. So here we have the functioning of the old wine skin yet trying to be pushed into the new flask. I'm here to tell you today, it is not going to work. We cannot go back to our old ways and be comfortable. We've got to meet the people of God where they are. The people of God, the, the man who does not know God, he's more likely to come on Facebook than he is to come into the church house. We got to go and get the sheep where they are. Then we can bring them into the, the churches and, and we can do our work and we can teach, but we're not going to sit there. We're not going back to the old way. We're going to prepare them and send them out to bring in more sheep into the kingdom of God. So we must use the new wine skin. We must use the new wine that God has given us. He has given us life and he has given us power in the name of the Lord Jesus. So we have seen this principle in operation throughout the history of the church. Look, I just want to take you down uh, 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 the historical lane only shortly because I want you to be able to compare and contrast where we are today. Uh, when Martin Luther, one of the fathers of the church, when he received the revelation from the Holy Spirit concerning faith and grace, uh, 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 the, he established a new church. And of course, a new denomination was formed known as the Lutheran Church, because it is by faith that we believe. It is through God's grace and his mercy that he allows us into his kingdom. So Martin Luther fought a good fight, but in that fight, yet there was another place we had to go. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And so then came along a man by the name of John Wesley. He preached with fire and spirit, and out of that came the Methodist denomination. You know us. We, we, got, a, we got denominations, but we have the law, but we have no spirit. It is the Holy Ghost, Acts chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost when it was fully come. Then we had spirit and we had life. So after the Azusa Street uh, uh, revival, then we had new wine skin formed. And a new wine was poured into it. So then we had the Holy Ghost that was poured out in the United States of America. There were many denominations that came out of that. I re remember, and I got an opportunity to sit under uh, the great Bishop uh, Phillips, who was over the Apostolic Overcoming 
Holiness Church of God and Bishop Jasper Roby. As a child, I was able to sit under such great men. Uh, Bishop Mason, I got an opportunity to serve in the church of God and Christ. I was able to sit under that. We purchased our edifice from the assemblies of God. Great men that have gone on before us, new wine that came, and the flask had to uh, go to a new flask to pour the new wine in. So stretch yourself. The flask, the covering, the outer skin must stretch itself to receive the new wine that we may go further in the kingdom of of God. So as God has presented before us a new wine skin, he wants us to stretch. He wants the capacity to be able to hold what he is revealing to the saints. We can't sit by and say, well, that's not the way uh, our bishop did it, and that's not the way my daddy did it. Well, guess what? During that time, they experienced a new wine skin. What you want to note is after the first fermentation process of wine, then that skin becomes tough. I say, Lord, have mercy. That means that we can't go off of the old wine skin into the new wine skin, the old ways into the new ways. Now, we'll always love God with all our heart, with all our mind. Those are principles that are never changed. They'll never be moved. But some of our ways that we have adopted through Pharaoh's stay, the time uh, uh, Israel was in Egypt, the times that we have stayed in our own lives in different areas of sin and not walking according to the knowledge that God gave us. That's old skin that has to be shed it off. When I look at that and I look at the breakdown of the body on a daily basis, you consistently shed skin. You're in this frame and you think, oh, this skin is going to last until forever. No, no, sir. No, 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 ma'am. It's going to shed and it continues to shed every day and every Every night. You can look how I looked at 12 years old. I do not look that at this season time of my life. But one thing about it is I kept walking with the Lord as instructed by my parents who told me that once I was young, but now that I am old, I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed to beg bread. Tell somebody because I'm the seed of God. Oh, I won't beg for bread and he'll never leave me and he'll never forsake me. He is always there. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. So therefore, we should expect our present wineskins to rip Every time Jesus moves in the earth, the earth, the church will shift. When God develops a new flask, we're in a new flask, he is pouring into us. Now, prophets, intercessors, your intercession should be greater. You just got a new inpouring, a new feeling. Oh, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost, over this time period that he's had us on a Sabbath, a time of rest, a time to seek him. Thank you, Holy Ghost, a time to meditate, a time to be with him. If you come out with the same attitude, it, uh, you haven't received the new skin. And, and let me help you. Until you receive the new skin and the new pouring, you will not go into the newness 
of the process. Every time a child is born, there is new skin. Every time an infant is born, there is new skin. And that skin sheds over the years. It sheds. It sheds the growth the maturity it begins to develop we have to develop we can't stay where we are we've got to move on further and just because the church today don't look like the church the way it looked in Jerusalem it doesn't mean that we are in error it means that his skin just stretched because we got new skin we got new wine pouring into our flesh now, don't you miss it. Get the new wine field. Get the new wine field. There are businesses God wants us to develop. Why? So we can bless the kingdom of God. Why? So we can help the people of God. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. He's down low. He's down low. He's down low. So then there, uh, uh, there can be no mighty spiritual awakening in our day without a great shaking of our churches, our organizations, our leaders, and our structures. I could stay right there for a couple of hours, but look at here. Organizations have been moved and disturbed because great leadership has gone on with the Lord. They fought well, and they have Finish their course. So what has been laid up for them is a kingdom, a place of righteousness for them to lay their heads and rest, to be in the great cloud of witnesses, to put on their white robes and, and their garments and, and to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. So John looked and said, so who are those folk that that I can't number. It's a great number that are walking around up here with us, and I don't know them to be Paul, and I don't know them to be John, but who are they? Tell them that the great Prophet Seaborn White got on his white robe and he's walking amongst the angels waiting for us to finish our course. Help me, somebody come and calm me down, calm me down. Hey, but look at here, look at here. So as the leaders go off the scene and the structure is shaken and shifted, that's how you know if your body skin is being a, 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 a protective agent, if you would for your internal organs. If your body cannot hold it, your skin uh, covering your organs cannot hold it, then God replenishes it overnight and through the night he allows you to shed it. We have a responsibility, saints. We must do what? For our internal organs, we have to eat correctly. We have to fast correctly. We have to go to the gym or walk around the block or do your in-home exercise. But we have a responsibility, thank you, Holy Ghost, just throwing it out there, to, to maintain this body that God has given us. We have a responsibility to maintain what God has left us through our forefathers and our workers of the role of the Lord's house those who labored before us. We don't just toss it aside because it's a new way today. No, it is a building block. It is a building block, layer upon layer, line upon line, precept upon precept. You can't read Genesis and then say, I'm done with Genesis like we used to do in school. We study for the test. Once the test is over, everything go out of our head. Not with the word of God. No, 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 no. It's layered upon layered. You cannot get to Revelation 
and not understand Genesis. It all starts in Genesis. But if I go into the prophetic, it starts before eternity. Before eternity is named, God in his great awesomeness had decided this is how I'm going to handle on this situation when the pandemic come and the overseers and, and, and Pastor Mark and all of them are there. This is how I'm going to handle the situation. This is how I'm going to get them to their great destinies. But not to believe. I don't want to hold you long. I'm coming down to my conclusion. But if we are looking for the second coming of Jesus, if we are praying for God to move in our church, in our cities, our schools, our families, and our hearts, we must look first for the new wine skin. Don't you miss it. Look, intercessors, the new wine skin. What is the new wine skin. I'm telling you, you got to stretch. You got to stretch yourself. You can't be stuck in what God revealed to you last week because every day he's talking. Every day he's revealing. I, I went to take a shower and the Holy Ghost began just to download a plan to me. And I was like, look, I, I felt last week that I was tired. I know the word that the Lord has been coming to me with, but I'm like, that's for my son. That's for my daughters. This is for them. No, he said, you get the work done. You got an assignment. How you going to tell me you tired when you've been sitting down for 12 months? Oh, he rebuked me. Did the Holy Ghost ever rebuke you? He rebuked me. He said, oh, no. Oh, no. You got your body where it needs to be. You can carry this load now. You didn't think you could carry it. That's because you were tired and you were worn in the journey. But you can carry it. So he began to download to me. But in conclusion, I want you to listen to what our beloved Bishop Locke said. She said it this way. She said, God has made the human body to be an extraordinary configuration with great detail. No, no one created, uh, a diff everybody's created differently for us to function at our maximum capacity with every aspect contributing to its overall effectiveness. Every joint supplies the other. Every organ supplies the other. The system and the heart, the cardiovascular system, supplies the brain. The brain supplies uh, understanding and knowledge and able to comprehend. The main ingredient of all of that is the blood. That's why Leviticus said the life of the flesh is in the blood. Because in your bloodstream, there is all life. There's all the nutrients. Your oxygen is carried in your bloodstream. So every organ supplier the other. She went on to say, there is nothing about or us or in us that is considered as without purpose. What is she saying? She said every organism in the body of Christ has purpose. To think that you don't have purpose or for others to treat you if though you don't have purpose is not of God because he created us that every, every organ would rest upon the other organ. The heart pumps the blood out. The blood leaves the heart and goes to the lungs. The lungs pumps the blood out and sends it out through the other organs. There's a major vessel in your body called the aortic uh, 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 artery, and that artery has small branches that pumps out blood through all the different circulatory systems. Every branch 
supplier the other. Every organism within the church supplier the other. She went on and she called uh, for the need of the new wine skin in the church that would stretch and enable out of ease, much more movement. When we have the capacity to stretch, we get greater movement. You know that if your ligaments tighten up on you in your joints, you cannot move. You are stiffened. In a lot of churches, the joints have been cut off. The ligaments have been severed. What am I trying to tell you? People that should be in the prayer room praying, they're on the earthship board. Why? Because nobody could see in leadership that this was a prayer warrior and not an OSHA. Both of them are magnificent positions. I'm like David. I could just be a doorkeeper in the house of God, but we needed David to be named king of Israel. So we have folk who sitting in the church on their pews, and God said, let me stretch them. I'm going to pour out a new anointing. I'm going to pour out some new wine skins for them to feel and to move in the body of Christ. Not that the old was wrong. No, we take that. It is a building block. It is a foundation. The old preachers and prophets. We used to be in church for a month at a time, every night going to revival service. But you know what? We wasn't so easy to slip off and slip away. Why? Because our feet were held to the fire. We were accountable. Nowadays, if you say something to the saints, they get an attitude. How you going to get an attitude with the voice of God. God comes to us in small voices. He comes to us in dreams. And the mothers would walk the aisle in that day, and they tap you on the shoulder, and they say, baby, the Lord showed me something last night. I need you to kind of bring that in. Uh, that's out of line with God. And we would be shivering in our shoes with the awesomeness and the respect that we had for the mother. And sometimes we would crouch down and we would hide because we knew we were wrong and we didn't want nobody to say nothing to us. But God is a revealer of men's hearts. We have men today who are yet in a pandemic, preachers who are plotting and planning in the church of the living God. But I'm here to tell you, you better stretch and receive the new wine skin and the outpouring that God has given to the nations. Help me, Lord. But I'm going to conclude with what our bishop said. She said this. She said, when the reciprocal carries of the heavenly message, oh God, when it becomes fixed and inflexible, when the reciprocals, uh, the carriers of the heavenly message of God becomes immovable, it's inflexible. They no longer serve God's purpose effectively. And finally, we will break if we do not stretch like the wine flask. If you don't stretch, and allow God to move and pour new wine into the new wine skin that he has prepared. He is the preparer of the wine skin. He is the preparer of the wine that he is pouring out. There were many who kicked against the Holy Ghost at Jerusalem. Uh, uh, they said to the disciples, are these men drunk with wine? Uh, how do they speak in all of these languages? Are they drunk? I heard a, a one speak in Arabic, and I heard somebody else speak in a, a Hebrew, and I I heard some because the miraculous power of 
God. He is the beginning. He's Alpha. He's Omega. The, he is the ending. He has already shaped and molded the wine skin so that it could contain our capacity of what we are to release in the earth on today. Come on, saints. Come on with me. Don't be left behind. Many years that movie came out to uh, show the people of God, just to give an illustration of what it might look like on the day of our Lord and Savior's return. I want to be just like Elijah. I want to be caught up in the midst, not see death, but to be able to shift Oh, somebody say, help me stretch. I want to be able to stretch and shift from this present time into a time of eternity. A time where every day will be howdy, howdy, and never good, goodbye. A place where there'll be no more tears and there'll be no more sorrow. And we'll be able to love on those who have gone on before us, and we'll see our great leader who will be sitting with the great cloud of witnesses doing all and remembering, oh, here come my children. And one thing I love about it, even though all of the saints and the, the great Bishop Ellis, Delano Ellis, gone on to be with the Lord, all of them, Papa, uh, they've gone on to be with the Lord. But I want you to know this. In my conclusion, that even though they have gone on before us, they cannot crown the Lord Jesus until we get there. There will not be a great ceremony until we get to glory, until we all sitting at the feet of our Lord Jesus, and we'll cry out, I stretch, Lord, even in that great pandemic that we experienced. I was able to stretch and allow new wine skin. I, I'm clothed with the cloth and the, the covering of righteousness. I'm able to stretch in righteousness. I'm able to receive your word in righteousness. Father, I got the assignment done. Even when I felt tired and, and didn't feel like it, and I said, I can count on my sons and my daughters. They got it. I don't. He, he said, no, 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 no. They were not put in the earth to do what you were assigned to do. So you just get up and get going because I've given you time so your body could rest and be healed and put in the place that you needed to be. And that place is to hear a word from God. Every day we should be hearing a fresh word from the Lord. What are you saying today, Holy Spirit? I remember the prophet that wrote, good morning, Holy Spirit. Every day is good morning. The personality, if you would, of God himself, how his divinity was left in the earth for us. Jesus prayed for us. And he said to all of those that come by way of the apostles, Lord, he wanted him to remember us. That is us. We came by the apostles. That's John chapter 17. As Jesus prays for the apostles, then he says he prays for those that come by way of the apostles, and we come by way of the apostles. I thank you for listening for this time. The Lord is good. He's always good, and he's an everlasting God. And to any of you who have heard this message on today, want to be fed more, all you have to do is send a message in the comment section on your Facebook page. You can tap into Zion Worship, Wine Dot. You can leave us a message there. Any of these uh, intercessors, uh, 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 Minister Robin White, 
Elder Frederick Williams uh, would on the wall pray every morning. He and Dr. Uh, Kadisha Henry, they pray every morning. Prayers going up. Uh, Minister Robin White praying throughout the day. Thank God she has the kind of job that allow her to just pray all day. So she and her heavenlies, you know, people that just like to pray, pray, she wanted to know. So we thank God for these types of people who are on the wall, on the wall praying. That's for all of us. It is not just a name of a show that was catchy. No, this is on the wall and it is a command of God that we pray always and the, we and that we not faint. But to you who may not know the Lord Jesus, the word of God says it this way. He says, first, you must believe that he is God. So if you believe that he is God and you can open your mouth and say, I believe that you are God and I'm turning my life over to you. I want to live according to what you say to your words, Lord God. Please let me into your kingdom. Them. All you got to do is say it. He'll receive you, and Zion worship will receive you. Our pastors, Pastor Mark White and Pastor Valerie White, they stand with their arms open to receive you. Know that there is no sin that is so great that the Lord God has not already made a way to forgive you and allow you an escape. These pastors are on the wall and they're ready to receive you and teach you the ways of God. So just take the number down all off of our sites, on our website, on my Facebook page, on Pastor Mark's Facebook page, Minister Robin White, Elder Frederick William. I'm calling these names out because God, he already given it to me. He's going to plant one of them in your heart that you will reach out too, and say, I accept the Lord Jesus Christ, that he is the son of the living God, and I'm giving my life over. Don't let this broadcast leave, and you not give your life to God. He has given a word that is a word for the nation. Don't you miss, he's concerned about you. But you tap in, uh, Pastor Mark, with the fisherman's tape, he's here doing the weekdays. Not only is he there, he's in Bible class. So you can pick up anywhere, Monday through Friday. We go to church like I used to go to church when I was a kid. We was in church every day. Day. And Saturday, we would be crying because we wanted to play. But we had to get ready for Sunday on Saturday. But I thank God because you know what? Some blunders I would have made in life I didn't make because the Lord God had a mother and father who taught me the ways of my Lord and Savior. I'm so glad about it. So I'm passing that on to you. So look for Zion Worship Center doing the weekday, and we'll be there for you, ready to serve you. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you until we meet again. And I declare that that is real soon. Be blessed.